we are going to be talking about the anointing of the sons of Issachar. We're going to be praying through that uh, tonight. And it comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 12, starting at verse 32. Let me put my readers on. And it says, from the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives. All these men understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. Wow, isn't that powerful that they understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. But don't you want to flow in that anointing that whatever it is that you're going through, that you understand the signs of the time that God reveals it to you, and you know what is the best course to take for you, for your children, you know, for your community, for your church. The Lord is um, revealing these things uh, to you. And so Issachar was one of uh, Jacob's sons, and uh, he and other tribes started to come together. Uh, the sons of Issachar came to support David uh, when Saul was trying to kill David. And uh, actually, the Issachars, they were the least of the tribes there. There was only 200 of them. Uh, there were thousands that came from um, different armies to support uh, David. But these were men who were very skilled in war. They knew how to um, fight. And they were ambidextrous. Uh, the scripture says they could shoot an arrow with their left and their right hands. And so they were very skilled in warfare. They had knowledge in the marketplace. They had um, spiritual insight and wisdom. And it is crucial that we are praying and asking God for this anointing to walk in this supernatural power and divine alignment, especially with everything that God has for you in 2024. So every believer needs the Issachar anointing in order to not miss out on what God is doing. And it is possible to miss out on what God is doing. If you're not paying attention, if you're not walking with God consistently, if your prayer life is weak, you know, we say um, that saying that much prayer much power, you know, no prayer, no power. And so if we are not walking with God, if our prayer life is weak, then we can miss out on what God is doing. And so I want you to understand that God wants you to have clarity. God wants you to be clear about what is going on in your life. We do not serve the, uh, the kind of God that wants us to walk in confusion. You know, he wants you to understand the time because he reveals it. You know, it's not like God is keeping it a secret. And so the word clear means to perceive, easy to understand and easy to interpret. And so I know that a lot of us believe that we serve a God that is not concerned about whether or not we understand uh, or that we know what it is that he's doing. You know, the Bible says that a servant does not know what his, what his master is doing, but he has revealed it to the sons of God. And then um, the scripture says that we, um, that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices lest he gets the advantage over us. And then in uh, Proverbs, it says, in all you're getting, get wisdom, get understanding. And so God wants us to have clarity. God wants you to be crystal clear about what he's doing on this earth through you. So he wants uh, us to know that. So uh, he wants us to not 
have to struggle about these kinds of things. You know, it says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who would give it to us liberally, you know, and that he will not withhold it. He's not going to withhold the wisdom and the understanding that we need. It may require us to press in differently where we don't understand why it is that these things are happening or why we're going through what we're going through. But God will, if we continue before him, he will reveal it to us. He does not want us to be confused. As a matter of fact, uh, we can see in 2 Chronicles 20, where uh, Jehoshaphat had to go up against, there were several armies that came up against uh, Judah. And that they were going to annihilate them. They came to kill them. But the spirit of uh, prophecy fell upon Jehaziel and he began to prophesy and he revealed everything that they needed to do. You know, he says, I need you to go to this war. I need you to go here. I need you guys to hide over there. I need for you to send the singers out first. You know, God was very clear about where they needed to go. And I believe we should have so much faith like that and so much authority that we began to ask God for specific instructions on what it is he wants us to do, what it is that we need to overcome in this hour, how to come out of situations, what uh, he wants you to accomplish in this year, you know, while we're going through this, you know, what does God want from you in 2024? That These are the kinds of questions uh, that we want to be asking God and we want to write it down. We want, we don't want to just get caught in the you know, the, the regular routine of life. You know, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to come home. You know, I'm going to sleep somewhere up in there. I'm going to go to church, you know, but basically that's it. You know, we don't really have any goals that set. We're not really believing God. We're not really walking by faith in anything. But in this year, we want to be able to do that. We need to know what are his plans for your life. What, if you have a spouse, what is God's plan for your marriage? You know, for your children, for your job, you know, what, what doors does God want to open for you this year? What are you believing him for? And so we should be crystal clear and change our perspective of, of God because he loves us so much. And, um, you know, that we are his daughters, we are his sons. And so he is speaking to us and he wants us to be clear and have clarity. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody ought to be glad about that. You need to be praying and asking God for clarity. God, make it clear, make it plain. Oh God, if there's any mountains, God, level the mountains in my life. And again, the word clear means easy to perceive, easy to understand, easy to interpret. The word clear also means it's transparent, it's unclouded. It also means plain and unmistakable, which means that we do not have to keep making mistakes. Glory to God, because God is making it clear. He has made it clear. The word clear means capable of sharp discernment. My God, today you are capable of having sharp discernment in the spirit realm and in the natural, where you understand that you're perceiving what the spirit of the Lord is saying. The word clear means to be free from accusation or blame, to be exonerated or to be vindicated. So God is making this year of a great deal of clarity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the anointing of the sons of Issachar is crucial. 
if you want to walk in supernatural power and divine alignment with everything that God has for you, every believer, as I said, needs the Issachar anointing in order to not miss out on what God is doing. And what these men did, they studied the movements of the stars and planets and they understood chronological time. Listen, they didn't have Google. They could go and just plug in some text and then get, get the A out to output this stuff. But they studied the movements of the stars and planets. They were responsible for calling the whole nation together when the stars aligned, you know, and that there were Jewish feast days and um, that were based upon this lunar calendar that they understood. And the nation had to gather to worship God on specific days of this heavenly calendar. And they also understood that when signs and wonders happened in the, in the spirit realm, the sons of Issachar knew how to interpret the meaning of those events. So when things were happening, when there were, when God did miraculous things, they understood why it was that God was doing those things. They knew that when there were wars that were happening, you know, diseases that broke out, they understood why these things were happening. And so uh, they also understood spiritual and political time. They could discern what God was doing and when he was doing it. Uh, they knew when one move of God was ending and another one was beginning. Glory to God. They could discern when a leader was falling and another leader was rising. They could even tell you who the next leader should be. They knew who to follow and when to follow uh, him and her uh, because they were also the tribe that supported Deborah when she went to war. Uh, the sons of Issachar followed and submitted themselves to this woman, which was unheard of, uh, you know, and they uh, helped her to conquer uh, their enemies of that day. And so they were also uh, full. They had knowledge of God's laws. They excelled in that. They were full of wisdom. In fact, God chose the sons of Issachar as one of the three tribes to go out in front of Israel whenever the nation moved. Judah was the praising people. They went first. Then Issachar, they were the wise and discerning ones. And Zebulon, they, that tribe, they were the financiers. And so God, listen, we serve a wise God. God knows how to strategize. Listen, he sends the praisers. He sends the ones that are wise and discerning. And he sends the ones that know how to deal with the money. Come on now. We serve a wise God. That is quite a miraculous combination right there. And they were so sharp and so spiritually astute that the whole nation depended on them to know what they ought to do and when they ought to do it. And so uh, one of the things that, um, like I said, they supported a female ruler when it may not have been popular, glory to God. And why did they do this? Because they could discern the times and the seasons. And they knew God's hand was on Deborah and that it was her time to rule. They understood that they gained a great victory and freed the land from foreign rule as a result. They supported King David before he became king. And when he was not popular with King Saul, who was in power at the time. And so before King David began to reign, our warriors from the 12 tribes started gathering to him. All the tribes were split in their support of David, except for one tribe. And that was the tribe of Issachar. All of them were united in their support of David 
according to 1 Chronicles 12, 32. Why did all Issachar support David? Because they knew that God had called him to be king and they knew that his time had come. They could discern the changing of the times and it worked out well too, of course, with David because he became the next king and remained the most famous king of Israel in all of history today. And so they, um, Issachar, the sons of Issachar had something special. Their ability to discern the times and seasons was an, uh, an incredible advantage. You know, that ability gave them inside knowledge and understanding of God's activities. Glory to God. Uh, to have inside knowledge that before God did anything, God would tell them, hey, I'm getting ready to do this. You know, they were not taken by surprise when things happened. And God gave them influence as a result of their unique ability to understand the times and the seasons. Uh, they knew what Israel should do and when it should be done. And all of that nation followed them. And so the good news is, hallelujah, is that you and I can have the anointing of the sons of Issachar. We can have that same ability to discern the times and the seasons. I'm going to say that again. You and I you know, regardless of how you see yourself, you may not think that you are worthy of it. You may be like, well, God, I don't know enough, you know, but you and I can have the anointing of the sons of Issachar. And so how can you, how can you and I obtain that anointing? The first thing that we want to do is to recognize that God has no respecter of persons. Romans 2 and 11 says, for there is no partiality with God. So your educational background, your ethnicity, your uh, whether you have great money, little money, or no money, none of that matters. There is no partiality with God. In Acts 10, 34, uh, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. So God is willing to give it to whoever is willing to walk in faith for it and to believe him for it. If God gave the sons of Issachar a special spiritual ability, he's willing to give me and you that same ability. Hallelujah. And the second reason why or how we go about getting this anointing is that we know that in Christ Jesus, all the blessings God gave Abraham and his descendants also belongs to us. And we've gone over this Galatians 3 and 9. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Amen. Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Amen and amen. We receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Glory to God. We are adopted into God's family through Jesus Christ. We are spiritual Israel today, and we are entitled to all the blessings of Abraham through Jesus Christ. So now that we know that we can have whatever God has given uh, to the Jews, we only have to just go ahead and ask for it. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, we read last night, we have not 
because we ask not, you know, and we want to be able to ask of God. The Lord says, ask of me, ask me, come into my presence and ask me, ask God for the anointing of the sons of Issachar. Ask him to give you the ability to discern the times and the seasons and always know what to do. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to run around because there have been a lot of times when I did not know what to do. I did not know what to say. I did not know uh, why certain things were happening. But it is great to know that when I go before God and I ask him that he is going to tell me, he is going to reveal it to me. And so all of God's promises are made available to us. All we have to do is ask. And let me tell you, the only reason why we may uh, maybe there's something that rises up within us that say, well, I don't know if that's true. You mean all the promises? Let me tell you, the only reason why we don't get what it is is because we we just don't believe it. But those who believe, guess what? They God, they get it. <laughs> you know, it happens because God says, no good thing will I withhold from you. I'm going to give you whatever it is that you need to be successful in this uh, calling that I have given to you. So when you feel like something new is about to happen, you know, then you want to ask God, when you feel reluctant to make a certain decision just yet because you feel like it isn't quite time. Come on now, when you feel like you shouldn't take on anything new right now because you feel like a new door is about to open, when God leads you to stand for something or someone that is biblically supported, but it isn't proper, or when God starts to give you influence and people follow your example, come on, these are all examples of that anointing that God will release on your life. That is the anointing of the sons of Issachar that is at work in you. And so I'm just going to ask you, are you ready to see the anointing of the sons of Issachar at work in your life? And, and if you are, we're going to um, pray that tonight. We're going to ask God, and then we're going to start paying attention to whatever it is that the Lord wants, whatever it is that he wants to do in us and that he wants to do through us. Glory to God, because I know that you need answers. I know that you need solutions. I know that there are people in your family uh, that needs answers and solutions, and you can come with the wisdom of God and began to speak and you can come with God's power and began to declare what thus saith the Lord that you are sure you know it's not like ah uh, well maybe I don't know whatever maybe no you sure you know that you know that you know that this is what God said God wants to give us accuracy where we're accurate in the spirit realm where we have that wisdom you know not for so that we can boast but for to uh his glory for to his glory for his glory and for his honor and to advance the kingdom of god that is why uh he is going to give it to us and so we bless god tonight and we praise him and i want you guys to just get ready we're going to pray uh, this on end, I want to see, um, do you guys have anything to say before we pray? And I um, will check to see if there's any prayer requests. Um, all I want to do is just piggyback on it that yes, it is not, <clears throat> it's not God's will for us to be ignorant of, of anything. His desire is, and I mean, even Jesus talked about, you know, God, the father making everything known to him and that he will make those things known to us. The Lord yeah. is not seeking to hold anything back from us. Listen, yeah. people, people like to say, you know, 
uh, God moves in mysterious ways. Yeah. Like, and, and, you know, when people say that, they think that they being all, Ooh. but you know, the reality is that for us, cho- the children mm-hmm. of God, there is no mystery. We, the, the Lord reveals to us, you know, what he's doing. He, he tells us very plainly in his word, what he mm-hmm. wants us to do and, yeah. and how we're supposed to move and operate in this world. And then when it comes to things that this word does not, um, and I keep, I'm pointing to my Bible, that mm-hmm. the word does not um, specifically um, address that, you know, maybe have to do more, more with either your life individually or some of the stuff that you see going on in the world today. All you have to do is ask. He is your father. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, as we remember back to some scriptures, I think Denise uh, pointed out a couple of days ago, um, you know, if if you being evil, it says, are willing to get, you know, will give good gifts to your children when they ask, yeah. how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to you when you ask? And it's like, you know, well, which of you, if your child asks you for an egg, would give him a snake and, mm-hmm. you know, ask you for bread, would give him a stone? We wouldn't do that. And so when you think about parenting for those of us who are parents and, you know, there's no time that our child would ask us something that we are, let me say that we are fully aware that they understand they can understand when they ask the question and we give them the answer there's no time that we withhold that answer you know but you just like we look at our children and go okay wait you're five so that's a good question but you're not gonna understand what i'm talking about right now so let's wait a couple of years and then we'll talk about it you know i've said that to my grandson a few times you know, cause he's just like, no, but I would understand. I'm like, no, you won't. You don't have enough context of the world around you to get it. So, so it is our responsibility to go in, to get in the word, to soak it up, to read it, to put it in repeatedly. This is a, this is like a, what do they say? Rinse and repeat type thing. Mm-hmm. This is a, this is a, you got to keep doing it over and over yeah. again. Consistency. Yeah. Consistency is the key to your growing in God. And so you keep doing this thing over and over again. And then in addition to that, you have to commune with him. So um, in yes, you read the word and it is absolutely important for you to know the word. Know what this word says, because then you'll know if something, anything that's coming against you, not coming against you, but anything coming at you doesn't agree with it. But in addition to knowing what this word says, yes. you need to be in relationship with your with the father. Mm-hmm. And 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 truthfully, that is definitely something that he really wants from all of us. I mean, who wants to have children and not be in a relationship with them? Nobody. And I mean, for any of us who maybe have some estranged kids, you know, somewhere, it it hurts our hearts that they're not, you know, with us. So know that your father, God, just like you as a parent would want to be in a relationship with your kid wants a relationship with you he called you to be in him not just because he needed you to go out and preach the gospel to all these people but because he wants to be in relationship with you that's our god he loves you and wants to know you so just Mm -hmm. make sure that you dig into that and know that if if there's anything that you have questions about it's a scripture and i think it's in james chapter one that says for he who lacks wisdom is to ask of the giving God who gives liberally and without reproach. I'm probably quoting the Amplified version, but you know. Um, and so just know that God, if you ask him, he's not going to be like, what you asking me that for? Or, you know, give you reproach in the sense of like berating you like you stupid for asking that question. No, he's going to give you the answer. That's amen. it, y'all. Amen. Just keep keep amen. seeking God. Keep seeking God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank God for, um, okay, so we got a few prayer requests here. Um, Let's see. Uh, Our sister Tanita says that's her prayer request tonight, uh, that she wants that type of anointing, vision, clarity, still grieving the loss of her mother. Um, Her heart is broken. Pray for her peace. And we're definitely going to do that tonight. And um, Sister Johnny may say the time and the season, my Lord. Glory to God. I so um, agree with that. All right. Well, we're going to just go in and just um, begin to thank God. And you want to make sure that you're somewhere quiet and that you can really click in to um, this prayer and that you're praying too. 
that you are, that this is your heart cry, that you're praying this as well. Amen. All right. Hey, can I say that too? Just piggyback on what you said. That means like, I don't know if y'all can see me, but when Denise is praying, I'm over here praying. So mm -hmm. just because she's praying don't mean that you got to sit and be quiet. Right, so right. When, when she, when you, but you, you can listen and pray, pray yeah, in the spirit, spirit, pray. And, you know, just like we told y'all a while, a couple of days ago, look, get to know the spirit of God, get to get yeah. the baptism of the Holy spirit with the evidence of speaking tongues, but you can also pray in English. So when she's saying something and you agree with it, go and go in. So yeah. get it, get it done. Amen. Amen. So let's go before God right now, father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you and we honor you tonight, oh God. We thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. We thank you, oh God, that you love us so much, oh God, that you know exactly what we're each feeling, what we're going through. You are so intimately aware of what it is that we uh, have been crying out, the tears that we shed, uh, God, Lord, even if we uh, have been concerned about anything and anything that concerns us concerns you, oh God, you are the Lord God that walks with us and you talk with us, Lord God, that you carry us where we need to be carried, oh God, Lord, you are the resting one, hallelujah, you are El Shaddai, oh God, that whenever we need to come and lay our head upon your breast, oh God, you will not turn us away, you in invite us. You keep calling unto us to come, oh God. You are a loving father. You are a good, good father. And we bless you tonight. God, Lord, we pray for your wisdom, oh God. We pray, Father God, that uh, you would increase our wisdom and our understanding. We thank you that your will will be done, oh God, and what you have called forth in us and through us. You've adopted us as your child through Jesus Christ in accordance with your pleasure and your will, Lord. We're praying for the Issachar anointing. God, give us understanding. God, cause our hearts to uh, be so connected to yours, oh God. Why, Lord God, your uh, things have happened the way that they happen. Lord God, cause us to be able to see it and understand it from your point of view, not man's, oh God. We want to hear your voice. And we pray, oh Lord God, that your spirit will be active in us so that we will have full understanding of every good thing in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you to give us a complete understanding of what it is that you want us to do in our lives. And Father, we ask you to make us wise with spiritual wisdom. Oh Lord, cause the way that we live uh, that it will always honor you and please you and that we will continually do good, uh, kind things for others, oh God, all the while. Father, we are learning to know you better and better. God, Lord, that's my uh, main prayer tonight, God, that we will uh, begin to know you better and better, oh God, that our relationship with you will grow. Uh, God, we roll all of our cares upon you tonight. Everything, oh God, that we're concerned about, everything that we're worried about, everything, God, Lord, that we have been crying about, we roll it over upon you. And Father, I uh, cry out that you will make our thoughts agreeable to your will. Lord God, if there's anything within us uh, that wants to believe something else, uh, God, that wants to believe that you're not for us, that certain things happen, because you don't care about us. Lord God, we release that right now in the name of Jesus. We cast down that thought. We cast down the imagination that you have left us, that you have abandoned us, that you are not concerned about us because it is a lie from the pit of hell. 
that only Satan has released that lie and we cast it down and we bring our thoughts into obedience of, of Jesus Christ and what you have said in your word that you will never leave us and that you will never forsake us. Lord God, you are with us, oh Lord, and you're working, oh God, even when we don't feel it, even when we can't see it, oh God. You never stop, you never stop working, oh God. You never stop moving on our behalf, oh God. Lord God, let the way that we live our lives always honor and please you oh god direct our steps and make them sure lord god we want to understand and firmly grasp what the will of the lord is god that we will not be vague in our thoughts we will not be thoughtless and that we will not be foolish oh god oh god but i declare that we will stand firm tonight and that we will walk by faith and we will trust you to release that anointing upon us tonight in the name of Jesus. Let it fall upon us afresh. Let it fall upon us, oh God, cause it to impact our minds. Lord God, we stand firm and mature in spiritual growth, oh God. We are convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Father, you have destined us, you have appointed us to come progressively to know your will, oh God. Father, we perceive, we recognize more strongly and clearly and become better and more intimately acquainted with your will, with your signs of the times, oh God. Lord God, I pray that your mercy will fall upon us tonight in the name of Jesus. And we're even praying this one, this nation, and even things to come in 2024. God, that we will not be lacking because we are saturated in your spirit. So regardless to what happens in this year, Lord God, that we are locked into you, that we hear your voice and no other voice do we follow. We believe your will, we believe your way, and we thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit who abides permanently within us who guides us into all truth, the whole full truth, oh God. And Lord God calls us, Lord, um, that even in our emotions, we command our emotions to surrender to the purpose and plan of God, to surrender to the truth God, God, that you will never hurt us, oh God, that you will never lead us astray. God, that you will always uh, cause it to work together for our good, oh God. <laughs> Father, so we think, oh, thank you, Father God, that we, uh, the Holy Spirit speaks whatever he hears from uh, Jesus and announces and declares to us the things that are to come, that we have the mind of Christ and we hold the thoughts of Christ, we hold the feelings of Christ and we hold the purposes of Christ in our heart. So Father, we have entered into the blessed rest by hearing to, trusting in and relying on you in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We rely on Jesus. We thank you for the spirit of God that is moving, that is activated the moment we begin to pray. And we take authority over the spirit of darkness. God, Lord, we take authority over locked doors and we command them to open in the name of Jesus. We cancel the assignment of the spirit of confusion, the spirit of doubt, and the spirit of fear. And for Father, we thank you for the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind, oh God. Lord God, we are not double-minded, Lord God, but we are single-minded and with our whole heart. We believe in you and we trust in you. Father, I ask that you give us uh, that which we have prayed for tonight, clarity of vision, clarity of sight, 
clarity of thought, clarity of mind, clarity of knowing and hearing your voice according to the word of God. Father God, cleanse our minds, oh God, that whatever is there, we take authority over if anything that we're thinking is not in alignment with what your word says. God, Lord, by uh, let your spirit adjust us. Let your spirit lead us. Let your spirit work in us so powerfully that we're, uh, we get on track, oh God. Lord God, wash over our minds with the blood of Jesus. Cleanse out all darkness and all thoughts that are contrary to your will, contrary to your destiny for our lives. Lord, I ask you, Jesus, to short shut any doors that need to be shut, whether spiritual or natural, and to open any doors, glory to God, that need to be opened, whether spiritual or natural doors in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you shut any doors that need to be shut and open those spiritual doors that need to be opened. Open up those natural doors. Oh, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over those doorways. And we ask that the enemy be rendered powerless and harmless so they cannot come back through those doors ever again. Oh, Lord God, to our home our property, our automobile, our workplace, our business, our finances, our ministry, our spouses, our spouses' workplace, over our children, their schools, their workplaces, our friends and loved ones in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we uh, give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, oh God. We thank you that you have caused us to be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Lord God, that you have given us access to come and sit and talk with you, to come and sit and dine with you, to come face to face with you, oh God, that you have caused, oh God, the veil to be ripped from top to bottom, Lord God, and you give to us access tonight that we can come, oh Lord God, and um and have that these conversations with you cause us to be so intimately aware of what you're doing, how things are going on with you, God, how you feel about the war over in um, Ukraine and Israel, oh God, how you feel about the abortion issues, glory to God, oh God, how are you uh, dealing with certain issues all around the world, oh God, Lord God, we want to know your heartbeat and what it is that you desire, uh, Lord God, of us and from us, oh God, we thank you, Father, that you are our champion, that you are our hero. Lord God, we put our eyes upon you and we thank you, Lord God, that you have strengthened us, that we're being strengthened with might in our inner man right now in the name of Jesus, that what caused us, oh Lord God, to fall apart in 2023, in 2024, we will walk in authority over it. We will walk in power over it. We walk in total victory and we give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. We bless you tonight, oh God, and we call it forth. We call it done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we give you all the praise in Jesus name. We pray. Amen and amen and amen again. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Our God is great. Our God is the great I am. Our God is king. Our God is the Lord. He is Alpha and Omega.
Omega, and beside him there is no one else. He stands alone. He is sovereign. He is God. Hallelujah. And we bless him tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us and for keeping us, oh God. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm praying that you would just let uh, the presence of God. Don't go and just do something else. Go and get some quiet time with the Lord. Don't let this pass you by. Don't let this be the end of it. Uh, go and get with God. Sit quietly before God and give him the chance to allow the uh, work, the process to begin in you. You want there to be a difference in how you're flowing and how you're thinking and all of that. And so God is going to do it, but we have to be present. Come on, we have to show up. <laughs> it is not hocus pocus. You know, it's us focusing and looking and keeping our eyes on God and doing what he says. Amen. Well, we love y'all. We love you so much.